Well, I think for me it was a combination. It was a combination of different things. I've since then I've developed or I developed a bit of a better understanding of what my triggers were, probably. So mine was sort of a combination of just general life pressures and future, currently relationships, all that sort of stuff, and then also having like very odd health anxieties. I previously already been to a hospital saying I think I'm having heart failure. Had acid reflux problems and just all sorts of symptoms, crazy symptoms, you know, like pressure in the chest and like um, feeling sick. When it sort of really hit for me was being in the early 20s and wondering what the hell I was going to do with my life. And that's that seems to be quite a common turning point for people in that sort of way. Um, and I put a lot of pressure on myself and that changed me as a person. Because you see yourself in a certain way, and if you don't right now see yourself as that same person, then that's conflict and it's always there. I mean, that's always there for everyone, it usually is. Most of us want to do something, have something in goal, uh, have a goal in mind to, to work towards and a vision of ourselves that we would rather be. And I felt that heavily because I had, you know, certain ideas of, you know, making a certain amount of money, having a certain status. But I think where what happened is I got confused of the difference between having enough and having something ephemeral or, or you know that is kind of non-existent because you're constantly adding to this image of yourself of you know that person can run a 10k and um, I think I should be one of those people that can do that or oh, that person like looks really good at nerds <laughs> I think I should have those and you add and you add and you add and what you don't do is you you don't accept yourself or yourself and when you can't reach it or if you keep striving to reach it and you don't reach it when you think you're going to reach it, you just, you just go down and down and down. One of the biggest um, moments for me was when I went to the doctors, which was a 10 minute walk down the road. Um, and within about a space of a week or a few days, I'd gone from not realising what my issues were to doing a lot of Googling and then um, in sort of the mix of developing agoraphobia and that kind of stuff. I remember walking to the doctors, getting the doctors, and he's like looking me up and down, he's like, how can I help you today? And I'm like, I'm like this. <laughs> I'm like, um, I think I have an anxiety disorder. And he's like, why do you think that? And I was like, well, look at my hands, and on the walk here, I had about 10 panic attacks, and I nearly turned back 10 times, and it was a 10 minute walk. Sometimes you've, even your family don't quite, can't quite understand, but, it's not until you go into those sort of areas that you'll even discover even if they did or understand or did have experience similar. For example, when I sort of was having real difficulties and started to talk with my mother a lot about it. And she, she told me about a time when she had me and my brother in the back seat of her car driving from one place to the other. My mum was a single parent, looked after five kids, very stressful life. And she was driving, and just doing a simple task is driving. And obviously her mind was working and working and overworking, and she had a panic attack, is what she later realised what it was. So she slammed the brakes on, stopped the car, drove up to someone's house, knocked on the door and said, excuse me, I'm so sorry, I don't know what's going wrong, but something's not right. And that kind of panic is something that you, you just can't, you just can't know until you've experienced it because there is no explanation for it. I would never have known that story unless I had uh, talked to her about it in the first place. It's just interesting how you, when you open the conversation and people start talking to you, you know, all your family and all your friends, and you kind of become that, um, that anchor in a, in a social group or a social environment where other people will come to you and talk, to, talk about it. Not even if they're asking for the help, they just want someone else to talk to about it because you're happy talking about it. My improvement came from myself. It came from a lot of a lot of soul searching, sort of looking inwardly rather than outwardly for the fix. You know, taking the time for myself first before you know expecting the world to change around me. Something I try and do is is try to slow down a bit because I need it. I need that space from this running a hundred miles an hour um, to just be a bit ca be calm and have a bit of space. That's, that's what I always think of is running in place. If you're always running in place, then you're going nowhere, so you might as well stop in place and take a look at what's around you. That's probably been one of the hugest factors is, is, is being more mindful about what's going on rather than 
thinking about what ifs and what maybes and, and the future. Um, and that's something I always did. I wanted to get there, and if I wasn't there, then I don't like where I am here. It's kind of sad, really, because it's because you're kind of saying you don't like yourself. And if you're saying you don't like yourself, then that kind of sucks. So at least say, this is me, this is how I am, allowing it to happen, allowing it to be, and it's not judging it. So just being there, existing, that's all, it, that's all you need, that's all it takes, rather than trying to force a sort of way of yourself. Just be more you, which is the science's motto. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. It is now. It is now. It is now. <laughs>